Hello guys, welcome you all for this end to end session of AML that it is a year long program that you're going to learn everything from scratch in order to become a successful data scientist. Hope you guys are enjoying and learning a lot. We are learning and we are just uh, improving your knowledge each and every day. We are, we are enjoying this, this journey. Okay. So yeah, today's session is on, um, uh, it is a continuation of previous session where we have introduced you to the K-means uh, clustering concept. Guys, as always, as I'm mentioning, please make sure that you guys watch all our previous session videos so that you can have a better understanding of what we are talking. Okay. Without wasting any time, let us jump into today's session. Today's session is on iterating, uh, like it's a it's a continuation of previous session. So where we're going to start means we're going to start with iterating the K-means algorithm. That is, we're going to see how this K-means algorithm is going to work. Okay. So, okay. Let's see. First thing, iterating the K-means uh, clustering algorithm. So the K-means uh, algorithm is iteratively assign the data points to their nearest clusters and update the centroid, nearest cluster centroid, and then it's update the centroid until the cluster assignment are stable the process repeat until the convergence okay let's put in a simple manner we will be having a data points and we need to move the data points to the cluster until it becomes convergence that is very separate consider here there is one cluster and here there is one cluster unless we are making this cluster it's going to keep on iterating in order to get that convergence okay let's see step by step so you can guys can understand okay first step calculate the distance of each data points of each cluster central okay consider the larger point or like like the centroids okay and for this centroid one two three four five these are the data points which are closer so this becomes one cluster similarly here here like that okay so as a first stage we will be having cluster centroid and from for that we will be assigning the data points nearer to it. so that that is what the first thing we need to calculate the distance of each of the data points to each of the cluster center assign each data points to the cluster center whose centroid is closer okay let us consider so this centroid as the closer data points one two three four five okay compared to this one this data point is far away for this cluster centroid this centroid here this data point is here so we have a longer distance right so we need to assign the data points which are closer to this centroid to this cluster okay then what is the next thing that we are having recalculate the position of each centroid based on the average of uh, average of the assigned data points okay once i assign this let us consider this one data point as one two three four five five values okay based on the average of it i'm gonna reassign this centroid here here like that uh, it will be anything okay based on the calculation i think that is a calculation by using the uh silver score or by using the uh, equidian distance like those uh, calculation or that based on that we are just moving the centroid and we are just finding what are the data points closer to the center and we, we make a cluster out of it. That is one. Okay. Then we are having a fourth step where we need to repeat the step one to three until we get, okay, we, the clusters are assigned and no longer there is any significant. Then. That is the convergence of us. Okay. I hope like now you guys are able to understand, right? First of all, we need to find centroids. Okay, that, that we have discussed in the previous session. We can go for a random thing or we can go for a K-means plus plus or another way of randomly doing that. Okay, those things that we can do. So, first of all, we need to fix the number of centroid. We need to assign the data points to the closer distance to that centroid and we need to reiterate the centroid and we need to find the optimal data points to those centroid and then we need to keep on doing this step until we get the convergence. Okay, hope you guys can be able to understand. Okay, yes, sir, over to you. Yeah, guys. So, uh, iteration, iterating in uh, k-means algorithm, guys. We have to iterate, okay, uh, on the assigned data points to to the nearest cluster centroid, okay, and uh, that updates the centroid until cluster assignments are stabilized okay this process is repeated till convergence is achieved until convergence so like there is no convergence there is no change or like there is no change after that till the time you have to do uh, the iteration okay for the algorithm Step one is calculating the distance of each data point to each cluster centroid. That is very important. Step two is assigning the each data point to the cluster whose centroid is closest. That is what you have to understand. Then step three is recalculating the position of each centroid based on the average of the assigned data points. Okay. 
then step four uh, is repeating step one to three until the cluster assignment no longer changes significantly so this is these are the steps okay for uh, k-means clustering okay uh, to achieve the performance and do iteration a uh, number of times so that till the time you achieve that uh, till the time there is no change uh, no change in significant change in the uh, in the process okay keep learning deeply let's move to the other section Yeah, sure. Sir. Moving on. Okay. How to evaluate uh, this cluster quality? Okay. Uh, so this is what we are doing for classification and regression, right? We go for an evaluation methods. We need to calculate whether it is working properly or not. We have a cluster man. Okay. Then what we need to find? We need to find whether it is working properly or not. Okay. That's what evaluating this cluster quality. Let us see what we are having. Evaluating cluster quality is a crucial to ensure that the resulting clusters are meaningful and represent the underlying structure of the data effectively. Okay, let's see what are the things that we are having. First is Silvert score. Measures how well a data point fits into its own cluster compared to other clusters. A high Silvert score indicates the good clustering. Okay, yeah, we have discussed this previously. Okay, um, simple thing. We are having a cluster A. There is a data point in cluster A. That means the data points belongs to cluster A. So how much similar the data points to this cluster A? And we are in cluster B. How much dissimilar is the data point of cluster A to the B? That is what silver score. We need to have more silver score, high silver score. Okay, so that we can say our cluster is proper. Okay, then we are having something called as done index. So, which is called as measure the ratio of minimum inner cluster distance to maximum intra cluster distance and a higher than index suggest well separated clusters okay let's put it in a simple manner it is also the same thing man we are having the inner cluster distance which should be minimum inner cluster within cluster distance of a data point should be minimum intra cluster distance it should be maximum we are having a cluster a there is a data point and the distance between the data point and cluster a should be very very minimum because the data points belongs to cluster a and intra cluster that is the data point of cluster A should have a maximum distance for the intra cluster, which is cluster B. Okay, you guys are able to understand, right? Next. Kelsey index. I hope like we have seen this before itself. Okay. When we have started our uh, like data pre-processing, like those steps, we have seen this Kelsey index. It's a ratio of between cluster variance to within cluster variance. A higher value indicates well separated cluster. Okay, let's put it in a simple manner. We need to have between cluster variance okay the ratio of between cluster variance to within cluster variance okay between two cluster the variance should be high within cluster the variance should be very low that is what this calcium index do okay so guys uh, these are some of the techniques in order to just evaluate the clusters okay uh, like in accuracy uh, so like in classification we are having accuracy and then for regression we are having auto score like that we are having for clustering we are having silver score dense index and then calcium index okay uh, calcium index so yeah so these are some of the metrics uh hope like you guys can able to understand yes sir over to you yes evaluating clustering cluster quality is very important guys so it's crucial so for the resulting okay for the performance and uh because it has to represent the underlying structure of the data effectively and uh, so we have to do evaluation so first uh, metric is silver score uh, which measures how well data point fits into its own cluster compared to the other clusters in high score indicating good clustering that's what is like it should be according to the cl clusters mean like it should not be an outlier of the cluster in which some data point is there so it should be in the mean it should be within that similarity like it should be similar okay compared to other clusters okay then you have duni index so which is uh, ratio for of minimum 
inter cluster distance to minimum inter cluster distance okay minimum okay minimum to maximum distance like it is a measure of ratio of minimum inter cluster distance to maximum inter cluster distance a high uh, higher duny index suggests well separated clusters okay and then uh, then we have then we have the other uh, yeah other uh, parameter which is the which will like which will be uh, helping us in evaluation of cluster quality so the ratio between clusters variance to within cluster variance so it is ratio between the cluster variance within the cluster variance the higher the value indicates well separated cluster okay uh, so these are the these are the parameters for evaluating the cluster quality okay we have a silvet score we have duny index we have the other um, chelsky uh, index which is the ratio of between clusters variance it will help us so all these three uh, evaluating uh, matrix will help us uh silvet score helps us measuring the how well data points are fit into its own cluster compared to other clusters okay then uh, in duny index we have the measure of ratio minimum inter cluster distance to maximum inter cluster distance the higher duny index suggests is well separated clusters so that means it it should be separated well minimum and maximum distance is uh, ratio is there as a distance so that the clusters have good distance and then we have uh, chernusky uh, index which is the ratio between clusters variance within cluster variance so there should be a variance within cluster variance okay cluster variance within cluster variance a higher value indicates well separated cluster so there should be a val there should be a variance there should be a cluster variance within cluster variance because it should be separated well separated so when it is done so it is uh, so all the parameters of evaluating cluster quality is measured properly and then evaluation is done properly and you have to understand these concepts deeply uh with long term objective function have patience consistency persistency and even if you don't know any concept so listen it again and again do go watch all the session 5 to 10 times do reinforce learning go and absorb it digest it and apply it so you'll get familiarity you will understand these concepts deeply and then you will become expert okay so let's move to the other section sure sir so moving on uh, let's see the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, k means clustering okay i hope like now we are moving to the final part of k means clustering because like we have discussed how to set it up what are the steps inside it and what are the way of evaluating it now we are moving on to the advantages and disadvantages okay k means clustering is a popular algorithm for clustering okay but it has some advantages and disadvantages that need to be considered whenever you deciding if it is suitable for a your problem first advantage simple to implement and understand computationally effective especially for a larger data set and it can handle a wide variety of data types widely used and well studied algorithm compared to all other clustering technique i will say this is a simple technique this is this, uh, so we are just calculating we just creating a centroid we are just assigning the data points we just recalculating the center until it becomes a convergence so it's a simple algorithm when compared to all other clustering technique because like other clustering technique is quite challenging i will not say it's difficult quite challenging to understand and they they are computationally heavy also but compared to all other clustering technique this came in as a somewhat lesser computation and they are very understandable and well documented clustering technique. let's see what is this it's disadvantage sensitive to initial centroid placement requires specific number of clusters k k 
can be influenced by outliers may not work well within non spherical clusters okay actually this is what the major disadvantage of this k means clustering whenever you are having a cluster which is not in a circle shape it will not work now it, it is if it is not in a spherical shape when you are having a triangle rectangle it will not work that is a major disadvantage of this algorithm so that's the reason we are we are going for next things are going like higher algorithm clustering is that special clustering is that something like db scan is that tsne like those clustering are that the reason is it can handle the k means can handle only this spherical clusters non spherical clusters it cannot handle and one more thing we are selecting the data points right that is number of clusters centroid that is influence the output of this k means clustering that is also very important if you if you select the wrong number of centroids then the output will be wrong okay hope you guys can able to understand yeah yes over to you yes so advantages and disadvantages of k mean k means uh, clustering is so k mean clustering is a popular algorithm you guys know it if you don't know so now know but it is it has advantages also at disadvantages uh, i've been always telling every algorithm has merits and demerits limitations and you we need to understand the limitations of each algorithm and uh, each algorithm is used according to the objective function and the data characteristics guys so understand that okay the so it it has advantages and disadvantages that needs to be considered when deciding uh if it is suitable for your problem so that's what i said that it should be according to the data characteristics and the problem statement or objective function you want to achieve what problem you are solving so otherwise it is not going to help you okay so the advantages are sim it is simple to implement and um, simple to implement and understand it come computationally efficient especially for large data set it can handle a wide variety of data types and widely used and well suited algorithm those are the uh, um, advantages but still you need to understand each algorithm has its limitation where you are using why you are using what is the data characteristics what is the problem you are solving okay sometimes advantage will become disadvantage and disadvantage will become advantage so you have to understand all those aspects so disadvantages sensitive to initial centroid placements okay requires simplifying the number of clusters k can be influenced by outliers so it 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 impacts like it it gets influenced by outliers um may not work well with non spherical cluster okay so this is the disadvantage and i think everything in this world has both advantage and disadvantage how you are using it for what you are using it and why you are using it so you need to understand these uh, analogies and terminologies or concepts and uh, you will be good to go like you will know in and out okay and even if you don't know just you go watch all the sessions 5 to 10 times absorb the information digest the information and apply the information and write in the comment section if you have any problem and do all the quizzes and we have more than 200 quizzes live so go and do all the quizzes so you will deepen the knowledge and skills and build long term objective function with patience persistency consistency and uh, perseverance okay with the this structure when you learn you will be world class you will be world number 1 1% talent okay so keep learning all these sessions deeply if you have any problem write in the comment section we'll be helping thanks let's move to the other side yes yeah, sure so moving on uh, let's see what are the applications of this game in classroom okay 
um guys uh, kms clustering has a wide range of application uh, in various domains from marketing and finance to biology and image processing okay so let's see what are the things so guys as mentioning again the slide can accommodate only three different applications there are multiple i will say all the industry has an application for machine learning will have the application for this game okay let's see what are the things that we are on market segmentation high it is used to identify the customer groups within similar characteristics for the target marketing campaign yeah so what is the target marketing campaign for us okay you guys are learning data science right then the books which are related to data science is a target market for us they cluster us okay these are the people who are doing data science so throw them or give them the books or suggest them or recommend them the books which are related to data science so this is one of the strategy okay i hope like if you guys are watching our video right there will be a ad before which is very closer to data science it will be ai ml or any kind of things okay so it will be closer to that that is what this marketing segmentation next document clustering grouping similar documents based on their text content for information retrieval on topic only okay got it so this is very important guys we are having okay so we have learned lots of algorithms right uh, let us consider our algorithm itself logistic regression whenever the uh, whenever we are having keywords which are related to logistic regression belongs to one document we have learned about something called as decision tree whenever the keywords which are related to uh, decision tree gets we we group to the another document we have learned about data forest right whenever we are having some content which is related to data forest we move on to the next document so like that this is called as document clustering next we are having image segmentation grouping pixel in an image based on their color and texture to identify objects or region of interest okay i have mentioned this previously for me you doesn't need anything right you doesn't need a background or my body or my anything only the face that is what our region of interest so based on the texture of this only these pixels you can able to like cluster this okay you can you can able to get this out that is what called as image segment so you get segment this only frame okay hope you guys can able to understand so these are some of the uh, application all the industry in this world as the application of am okay these are some of the applications only three applications okay so yes yeah, over to you yes so application of k means clustering guys marketing market segmentation so i'll give example guys wherever whichever industry has customers and wants to sell and wants to do market segmentation marketing i think if it is industry even if it is not industry if it is ngo still they have to do marketing okay so every industry needs that so that means k means can be applied ai ml can be data science can be applied that's a simple example document clustering group similar documents based on the text context information wherever whichever industry use documents and they want to understand document especially law finance even business research and stuff even big companies they have a lot of documentation they want to simplify them you can use it so let's say all industries image segmentation it's a very specific computer vision uh, technologies who are working on images or other industries so can be used so n number of industries n number of industries we can use uh, k means clustering unsupervised learning ai ml data science keep learning deeply okay with long term objective function and with patience persistency consistency and deeply learn all these things absorb the information digest and apply do all the assignments all the quizzes and keep learning deeply thanks yeah guys so yeah this is what we are having for this session so we have introduced you the entire concept of kevins that is a theory theory concept how it works what is the black box behind it what are the advantages and disadvantages finally we end up with the applications of this kevins classroom okay hope you guys can able to understand so till this point we have introduced you the all the theory concept of related to kevins is completed we going to see the coding part in the next session and it going to be very interesting guys 
okay uh, let's hope you guys have enjoyed this session so if you guys have any doubts just ping in the comment section we will take up and we will solve your doubts guys uh, till this point if you guys doesn't subscribe to our please subscribe to our channel because like it's going to be a year long program so you guys doesn't miss any of our, any one of our videos and then just subscribe and, and just click on the bell icon so that you can get the notification whenever we just uploading the videos so yeah guys that's it from our side so until next session guys bye take care we will all meet in the next session guys bye